What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at a brand new case from Fractal Design. This is their Define Mini C and if you're watching this video on the day of upload it has just launched today and it's a micro ATX case which is kind of exciting because it's been a while since Fractal released a chassis in this form factor. I think the last one we saw was the Define Mini which uh, actually looked a lot like this one. In fact this case looks very similar to all of the other recent Fractal cases we've seen like the Define S, the Define Nano S kind of has that same Scandinavian minimal design. However, once we take a look at the internal layout, we'll see that there have been some drastic improvements made um, that uh, the other cases do not currently have. So that's going to be pretty exciting as well. So taking a look, oh, first off, I should mention MSRP, $80 on this bad boy. 80 bucks, not too shabby, very competitively priced. That's for the windowed version. It does come in a non-windowed version as well for $5 less. So you could save some money there if you don't care about seeing your innards and showing off your handiwork. Now with that said, taking a look at the front of the case here, you do get that same faux brushed aluminum finish that we're used to seeing on these fractal cases. However, it is a plastic construction on the front panel. And uh, even though it does have this very nice closed off look, uh, you still get ample ventilation on both sides of the chassis. So you do get fresh intake going to the uh, rest of your components inside, which is also nice to see. Now, if you pop off the front panel, you do get a removable dust filter along with some mounting options, which I will get to in a bit. Moving on to the top, you've got your front panel I.O., which includes mic and headphone jacks, power and reset, along with two USB 3.0 ports. And just behind that, you get a single Modjuvent cover. We've seen these before from Fractal. It's got some sound dampening material on the underbelly if you want to tailor your system for, uh, for silence, for example. However, you can remove it. There's some internal latches that allow you to pop the panel out very easily, and that'll actually open up the case for more airflow. If you wanted to slap a couple 120 millimeter fans on there, you can slap up to two of them. Or if you wanted to install a 280 mil, I'm sorry, 240 millimeter radiator, you could do so. However, you want to make sure that your RAM is no taller than 40 millimeters. That's from the motherboard to the top of your memory module. Um, otherwise, you could run into some interference issues with that radiator. At the rear of the case, you will find one of Fractal's new Dynamic X2 GP12 120 millimeter fans with these white blades. I would assume there's also been some kind of improvement to the bearings or airflow and things like that. Uh, this is one of two included fans you'll find in the Define Mini C. There's also one at the front intake of the chassis, uh, but this one on the back is actually actually positioned on these flexible mounting strips, which allow you to move the fan up or down, uh, preferably down if you want to open up some clearance for a top radiator potentially. Now just beneath the exhaust fan, you'll find five expansion slots. And this is kind of the beautiful thing about the micro ATX form factor is that you kind of hit this sweet spot between a mini ATX build, which is super compact and portable, but not very feature filled. You can't do a dual GPU setup, for example, and a full tower ATX chassis uh, where you have all the features. You can do, you know, four-way SLI, four-way crossfire if you wanted to. However, you're dealing with a lot more real estate that you're taking up on your space. So for users who don't really have all that space in their rooms, on their desks, uh, but still want to run maybe a multi-GPU setup or even just a couple different PCIe uh, cards in their motherboard, this might be a good option, uh, is going with a, a micro ATX case like this. So five expansion slots gives you plenty of functionality um, without sacrificing too much in, um, in, in real estate. Now towards the bottom of the case, you get this power supply bracket, which you can remove with these two captive thumb screws. Speaking of which, both of the side panels also include captive thumb screws, so that's very much appreciated. But to install the power supply, you simply remove that bracket, screw it onto whatever unit you're gonna install, and simply slide it back into the rear of the chassis before remounting those thumb screws. Super simple. You also get a power supply dust filter, which spans the entire length of the chassis uh, because there is an optional 120 millimeter fan mount at the front floor of the case as well. So um, you're gonna want ample coverage for a dust filter to cover both that optional fan mount as well as your power supply, assuming that you're installing the unit with the fan face downward. On top of that, the, uh, the, the, the filter is accessible from the front of the case, uh, simply because it's just kind of a pain sometimes when you want to clean that out to have to reach around to the back of your chassis. Much more convenient to have it at the front, in my opinion. Taking a quick look at the bottom here, you get four of these shiny plastic feet with uh, rubber pads at the very bottoms as to not scuff up the surface of your desk and to also keep your system from slipping and sliding around. As far as the side panels go, I already mentioned the captive thumb screws, which is very much appreciated. You also get a fairly large side panel window here on the main side of your system. Uh, which is kind of a plasticky acrylic plexi material, whatever you want to call it. It's not tempered glass, it's the typical plexi that we're used to. Uh, so it is fairly prone to fingerprints and especially scratches. So I would make sure to leave on that plastic wrap, that plastic packaging, until you're completely done with your system, um, just to avoid any kind of accidental scratches. Uh, 
essentially do the opposite of what I just did here. There is no sound dampening material on this side panel simply because the window itself takes up most of the real estate on the panel. It would be kind of pointless to even include just a little sliver of dampening material anywhere here. However, on the other side panel, um, that's pretty much all you get is just sound dampening material across the entire thing um, to, again, reduce noise and vibration and optimize the chassis for silent operation. So I think on that note, that pretty much covers all the external features of the chassis. Why don't we go ahead, work our way inward now. I'm gonna take the side panels off and we're gonna start installing all of this hardware. I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm not gonna say what all this stuff is until I'm actually ready to install it. We'll just call it out as we go and we'll uh, take it from there. Should be good, let's do it next. All right, so we've got the main side panel off now, and it's time to install the motherboard. I've already prepped the motherboard, uh, installed the CPU, memory, and cooler and all that jazz. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, start installing these standoffs. They are not pre-installed. Um, however, Fractal does give you one, one, bonus, one bonus standoff in the middle to kind of get yourself oriented, which is thoughtful. Would have liked to see pre-installed standoffs just to cut down some of the installation time, but what can you do? You guys can probably see the generous CPU cooler cut out here, which is very nice, as well as plenty of grommeted holes for, for routing your cables through. Uh, you've got two up here, preferably for your 8-pin EPS for your CPU, uh, maybe like radiator fans, things like that, and two very large cutouts on the side here for your 24-pin ATX, USB 3, whatnot. There's also a couple other cutouts at the bottom of the chassis, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. And drop in our motherboard like so. And you guys are probably wondering, what freaking motherboard is this? Uh, we're actually using an older platform for today's test build because turns out the only micro ATX board I had on hand that was available um, was a, a, a Z, Z170 or Z77 board. <laughs> so, um, you can see we're a couple generations old here, rocking that Ivy Bridge lifestyle. We've got a, a 3570K Core i5 in here, um, which I actually had to take from my HTPC. I'm not sure if you guys caught that from my Instagram post, but uh, Wifey Sauce was not too happy when she found out that the HTPC was not in order. Additionally, we've got eight gigs of some A-Data memory. It's just some, some budget economical kit that I've had for a while, along with a very new NZXT cooler. This is the Kraken X52, 240 millimeter. Thought it would be um, a nice way to test out the radiator support in the Define Mini S here, or the, sorry, the Define Mini C. And voila, while we're at it, why don't we go ahead and pop out the Modge Event cover while we're here, just to open up a little bit more airflow. <laughs> And uh, I just wanted to point out that the radiator um, support at the top, as well as at the front of the case, um, does feature the same kind of flexible mounting strips that we saw on the rear exhaust fan. Um, so if you wanted to kind of slip and slide the radiator, whichever way you wanted to, um, gives you a little bit of flexibility there. Speaking of which, we are gonna finish installing this AIO. I'm gonna go ahead and position the radiator at the front of the case. I think it'll look pretty nice right there. Now really quick, we're gonna pause for a second on the radiator installation here to show you one of the newest additions to the Define family of chassis, which is a power supply shroud. Many of you guys are familiar with these. Uh, you've seen them on plenty of chassis in the past, and I think we've been waiting for Fractal to implement one of these for a long time now, so it's nice to see that they finally have. Uh, if, you're, for, if you're unfamiliar with power supply shrouds, it's basically a compartment. It compartmentalizes your chassis into a separate unit for your power supply itself, as well as to stash any excess unwanted cabling um, and keep them out of sight for a cleaner, more tidy look overall in your system. Additionally, there's a hard drive cage underneath here, which we're gonna get to in a bit. Another thing I wanted to point out is that there's a lot of ventilation um, at the top portion here of the, of the shroud, and that's just to allow for some more airflow, either for your power supply, if you were to mount it with a fan facing upwards, or for a second graphics card, if you were, do, if you were doing two-way SLI or, or crossfire, your bottom card might be starved for airflow Flow if there wasn't any kind of ventilation on this shroud here. So that's uh, that's gonna ensure some, some cooler temperatures, hopefully. Maybe we'll do some testing on that in the future. Now circling back to our radiator installation here, since we're dealing with the 240 millimeter unit, we are pretty much good to go. We can just slap our fans in there. We can even probably have some room for push-pull in this configuration, which is really nice to see. However, if we were to try installing a 280 millimeter radiator, we would have to make some adjustments to the case to get that to fit at the front here, uh, including um, removing this front panel. There's a panel that's embedded into the power supply shroud, which you would have to remove in order to open up some more clearance for that uh, 280 millimeter radiator. And also the hard drive cage at the bottom underneath the shroud would have to be positioned further back 
towards the back of the case closer to the power supply, which can be done in this chassis. So you would have to do that. I'll show you guys how to do that in just a bit, but a couple modifications there if you were to fit a radiator at the front of your case that is of the 280 millimeter variety. And radiator installation complete. All right, power supply installation, remove the bracket, two thumb screws, very simple. And we're just gonna screw this on to the power supply like so. Um, I already tried, you cannot install the power supply from the back side of the case. It has to be through the rear and nothing else. It just uh, simply doesn't have the clearance, which is fine. I would have liked to see the option for both, but at least there's uh, still a viable solution that's pretty easy. So why don't we go ahead and get this guy installed? All right, where are the screws? Here are the screws. Then you shove all the cables in there and just push her in. Nice and easy. There we go. You just screw her down. There you have it. All right, so now that we're ready to connect our front panel connectors to our motherboard, uh, which includes things like HD audio, our uh, power and reset and things like that, um, you can see that there's actually a couple cutouts. There's three cutouts. There's one at the very rear, one at the, uh, towards the middle where, where your uh, USB 2.0 would presumably be on your motherboard, and one at the front here. So you get three cutouts. Uh, they aren't grommeted. They're actually too small to even um, be grommeted, but uh, they are there so that you can easily route your front panel connectors to your motherboard very tidily and neatly. Neatly and discreetly. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Now taking a look at the back side of the case here, we can kind of see what's going on underneath our power supply shroud. So of course we already have the unit installed uh, as well as our hard drive cage. Now the hard drive cage can support up to two and a half inch or two three and a half inch drives. If you're gonna be supporting the latter, it does, uh, the trays come with these rubber vibra vibration pads for optimal silence. And uh, they are made of metal, so they're very sturdy. I'm gonna go ahead and slot this in right there. Right there. And uh, if the hard drive cage looks a bit, a bit loose to you right now, it's because it is. There are four screws uh, that are holding it in place at the bottom of the case that I have um, already loosened to show you just how flexible this cage can be. So this is the default position it uh, comes in, but if you wanted to, you could slide it all the way over and pretty much hug the, the power supply unit as close as you would want to before uh, interfering with the, with the actual cable plugins. Uh, and that's again to open up room at the front of your case for a lengthier 280 millimeter radiator. And you could do push-pull with a uh, with, with a radiator that size as well. You would just have to um, perhaps use the fans, install the fans outside of your case, uh, not necessarily outside, but outside of the main frame underneath your front panel, uh, the plastic front panel there. So you'd have one set of fans there and another set of fans, your radiator, and then you could fit another set of fans just before the hard drive cage there. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could remove this hard drive cage entirely and have even more room for any kind of radiator business at the front there. And you would still have additional room at the bottom, at the very, very floor of the chassis. Uh, there is a mounting point for a three and a half inch drive. And that does come with rubber vibration pads as well. So you're not just installing it straight to the floor of the metal chassis. You actually do get some, some buffer there um, for, for reduced noise and vibration, which is really cool. Since our radiator is already installed, there's no other alterations of this case we need to do in order to install our hard drive. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Boom. Here's a really quick look at the drive cage from the bottom of the case. Again, you can see that it uh, can slide pretty far off to the right to open up a uh, clearance for that 280 millimeter radiator. And uh, you can kind of see the um, little cutouts here for the rubber vibration pads if you were to install a single three and a half inch drive at the floor of the case and remove the uh, cage altogether. There we go. Now also at the back of the case, right behind the motherboard itself, uh, actually overlapping the, the generous CPU cooler cutout, you'll find your dedicated SSD mounts where you can fit one, two, three, three SSDs I believe. That's pretty generous actually. Uh, it's got the single thumb screw that holds it in place. You can remove it like so. Let's go ahead and mount some SSDs to this bad boy. Uh, we're just gonna mount one actually in the middle and see how that goes. Uh, it does come included with screws for you to do that. Simply just align it and screw it down. And boom. 
Now one thing to keep in mind with this kind of SSD layout here is that you're gonna need a flat SATA cable to connect it, at least on this end, properly. A right angle SATA cable in this configuration will not work. You can probably get away with that with the hard drive cage down there, but not for this kind of more flatter uh, orientation. Installing the graphics card in the Define Mini C is quite straightforward, pretty much like most cases that you've probably seen. You simply remove the uh, PCI slots, which do have thumb screws. Go ahead and slot the card in. For our test build, we'll be using an unnecessary GTX 1080 Founders Edition because we can replace the thumb screws. Now I should mention here that you get 350 millimeters of GPU clearance length if you are gonna be installing a fan at the front of your case. If there's no fan at the front, then you get 335 millimeters of GPU length, um, which is probably more than any of us should ever need. As far as the AIO goes, if you aren't using an AIO and you're gonna be using uh, just a standard CPU cooler tower, then you get 168 millimeters of height clearance uh, with the windowed version of the Define Mini C and 170 millimeters of clearance with the non-windowed version. All right, winding down to pretty much the end of the road here. Last thing we gotta do is tidy up these cables and talk about cable management in this particular case. And so far, just from looking at it before I really even get started with everything exploded all over the place, I think this is gonna be pretty straightforward and also pretty hassle-free because we've got a lot of mounting options here or routing options, I should say. There's plenty of tie-down points. You get uh, four of them right here below the SSD. Actually, there's three more right here, just, just uh, right next to the power supply shroud. And you've also got this kind of like recessed area uh, to the left of the motherboard, um, which you can really tuck in a lot of cables, especially with the help of all these handy Velcro straps. Fractal Design has included three of them for you. Um, those work really well from my past experience. You've also got plenty of room underneath uh, the power supply shroud itself uh, between the hard drive cage and the unit, especially if you were to remove the hard drive cage entirely, then you would have even more room to just stash extensions. Um, I don't know if you wanted to actually integrate like a, uh, a water cooling pump down there, you probably could find some way to MacGyver that. Uh, there is tons of routing options here, so why don't we go ahead and start tidying this up and see how we do. And voila, there it is, cable management. All wrapped up in about five to 10 minutes of tidying. Let's see how easily the side panel goes on. This is the wrong side panel. This is for the Nano S. Good Lord, where are you, Kyle? Come back to us. Here we are. So pop that on like so. And holy smokes, there's like zero pushback. There's literally, it might as well be empty back there. There was zero pushback, completely screwed down, no problem. Um, sweet. And I've also connected the extensions on the other side as well. So that means we're pretty much complete. Let's go ahead and pop the uh, the rest of our stuff back on here, including the dust filter. Still in focus. Front panel. Ta-da! There she is, ladies and gentlemen, all built from the ground up. Very straightforward. Although, there was one thing that I forgot to mention earlier in the video, and that is, if you are gonna be removing that top mod event cover, Fractal Design has also included this nifty magnetic dust filter for you to slap right there at the top like so. That way you get all nice and clean, doesn't get all overrun with dust. It's it's a match made in heaven, let me tell you. So uh, yeah, why don't we go ahead and cut back to a wide shot so you can see my beautiful face. I'll wrap things up with some closing words and we'll end this here video. All right, so as far as my closing statements on the Define Mini C go, Honestly, there's not too much to complain about here. I could be nitpicky and say, well, I wish they'd pre-installed the standoffs to make the build process go a little bit quicker. But again, it's an $80 case. And for that price point, it's pretty much unparalleled. Um, the term, in terms of like how much hardware you can fit in this thing, how much water cooling support there is in terms of the radiators, you won't really find that in a micro ATX case at this price range, especially because the size, I don't know if I did a side-by-side -side comparison, maybe I'll, I'll jump to a B-roll shot right here, but this case, the Define Mini C isn't that much larger than the Define Nano S. It's actually much closer to that size of that mini ITX case than it is to something like the Define R5 or the Define S, which makes it even more compelling if you're short on space 
desk space, room space at your place of, of usage. So um, that's that's also pretty pretty uh, pretty cool. Now, one thing to consider here, if you are going to be installing two graphics cards, if you're doing a dual GPU setup, is that your bottom card might be a little bit starved for airflow, especially since uh, the power supply shroud here is where it is. Now, I did mention that there was some ventilation that could help with that. However, after installing a standard ATX power supply, I've noticed that it's actually pretty much up to the brim of that ventilation rendering it more or less useless to any kind of video card that would be directly above it. So if you were going to do SLI or Crossfire, for example, in this case, I would suggest maybe opting for an SFX power supply unit, something a little bit smaller to actually open up that ventilation a bit more and then make, making sure you have ample uh, airflow going to that part of your chassis by having you know either a, a fan at the bottom there or making sure that your radiator uh, your front radiator reaches all the way to the bottom um, giving some fresh intake to your graphics card there but apart from that uh, fractal design has done it again with a small but powerful um, little chassis here and I, I give them full marks for uh, water cooling support on a budget, especially in this form factor. So that's all for now, guys. Let me know what you think of this chassis here. Uh, before you go, be sure to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, I'm Kyle with Bitwit. Until I change my channel name again, thank you all for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you all in the next video.